Hey there, this is Melinda, and today I'm here because I'm making a very special video. This is a video for a very dear friend of mine in the vinyl community, uh, Chris at Tunes from the Main Cave. He is celebrating um, 500 subscribers with his Tonto Jump On It contest, and I am very privileged and honored to um, uh, put my entry in for this contest because Chris is truly an amazing talent. Uh, I uh, saw his one of his videos and immediately subscribed based on merit. Didn't know him at all. Just knew that he was a very talented guy and he um, has a very great gift of storytelling um, and I just really enjoy his channel and I still do. So congratulations Chris. I am more than happy to enter this contest. Um, yeah, I haven't been able, I'm kind of uh, at the last minute here um, in the contest because I've been on va vacation for the last couple weeks and uh, this work week for me is the craziest week of the year. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started now and the very first record I'm going to show uh, is for a question he asks, uh, what record reminds you most of your family? Um, for me, there is only one record that is the true answer to this question, and um, for the longest time, um, it's very easy to find. It's in all the record stores. Uh, I, I saw it several times, and I always pointed out to my husband, this is the most sentimental record and best record I will never own. Um, it has um, really great memories, but it also has some really hard memories for me. And uh, I'll go ahead and show it to you because while I was in Florida for this contest, I decided to pick it up. Uh, and anyway, it is Sunny and Cher, All I Ever Needed Was You. Um, when I was uh, born, uh, up until I was four, we lived in a, a town called Santa Claus, Indiana. It is a real town. It really exists. Hallmark has made a Christmas movie based on that town showed no footage of the town at all, um, but uh, I guess liked the idea of having a, a Christmas story about Santa Claus, Indiana. So anyway, uh, I lived there until I was four. My first memory that I have ever is about this album. Uh, when we lived in Santa Claus, um, thankfully the record itself was on the turntable. Um, it is uh, the turntable that's the 1967 Motorola turntable that I featured on my stereo equipment video. Uh, anyway, I took this album cover outside and left it outside in the rain and it got destroyed. So that is my very first memory that I, I know of. Um, anyway, thankfully the record stayed intact and uh, that was a record that I would play a lot had little dance uh, moves to and um, loved to dance to it. Um, anyway, we moved from Santa Claus, Indiana to another town and um, when I was four. And shortly after that, my dad left and I was a daddy's girl and um, I didn't understand. It was just truly devastating for me. Um, he lived 20 minutes away and we might be signed two or three times a year. So it was a very hard time for me. Um, but I would take this record uh, with many others and I would uh, listen to it in the living room and uh, dance and have a good time. But there is a song on here and it is called You Better Sit Down Kids, sung by Bunny, uh, Sunny. <laughs> and uh, it's a very sad song. It is about a dad saying goodbye to his kids, it's, you know, about him and his wife getting a divorce. Um, I'm, I knew the lyrics all too well, and even though I would be dancing and having a good time when that song came on, I would kind of go into my little corner and cry. Um, I never wanted anybody to see me. I wanted to keep it to myself. Uh, even back then, I knew that was just something I wanted, didn't want to share with anybody. Um, but one day, uh, when I was crying, my mom walked into the room and saw me. She heard the song. She knew immediately why I was crying. She swooped me up in her arms, and I don't remember what she said, but it made me feel better. Once I was able to quit crying, um, I just remember seeing her walking out of the room and just looking at me and saying, 
you know, Melinda, from now on, let's just listen to side one of that album, okay? And uh, I obeyed her. I never heard that song again. Um, I went on and listened to side one a lot, but never heard that song again. And uh, it kind of haunted me for a very long time. Uh, but while we were in Florida, I picked this record up, and I actually, um, one night, got the courage to listen to the song, You Better Sit Down, Kids. I looked it up on YouTube, um, and uh, it is a terrible song. The music is very outdated, but other than a little bit of a, a piece that Sonny sings in the middle where he's telling the kids all the things he need, they need to do to obey their mom, um, I remembered every single word. I... I remember that song very well. But anyway, uh, I kind of equate this song, uh, or this record, with um, life itself. Um, there are a lot of really happy tracks in life. There are really a lot of um, great stuff. But sometimes we get le left out in the rain and abused. And um, at other times, there's a track or two in our life that's just downright painful. Um, but you know what? Instead of running away, I decided to own this. So anyway, this is uh, my answer to the question that reminds me most of family. Uh, Sunny and Cher's All I Ever Need Is You. The next one I'm going to show reminds me of I, uh, my wonderful sister. I have an incredible sister. I was the baby and the brat. And she was absolutely an incredible sister. And uh, this definitely reminds me of her. This is Sean Cassidy. Uh, it contains the hit single, Da Do Run Run. And um, anyway, I haven't listened to this record since I was a little kid, and I probably won't. Uh, I do remember every single song by heart. I had a t-shirt with this picture on it. My sister had a picture with this t-shirt uh, with this picture on it. And um, I remember all the songs, even though I probably won't ever listen to it. The only reason why I bought this was because it still had the poster in it. And this is a poster we had hanging up in, on our wall right next to Casey from Casey and the Sunshine Band. So there is the poster. Um, anyway, it, this reminds me of my sister and we both loved Sean Cassidy very much growing up. Uh, the next uh, records I'm gonna show are song, uh, records that remind me of my husband. This is his favorite band, Train. Uh, he really loves Train. Uh, while growing up, um, he was really restricted from what he could listen to, so um, he doesn't have a lot of great memories of music growing up. Uh, but one other record he really loves to hear is Miles Davis. He really loves this kind of blue album. And when we go record shopping, he loves to um, look through the jazz. Um, he doesn't really buy anything. He's not really into vinyl um, or collecting, but he will look through the jazz section. Um, the next question that uh, Chris asked, he wanted us to uh, name an album that reminds us most of our kids. Um, I do not have a copy of this record right now. I'm assuming my daughter, when she moved out, took it with her. But um, the band that reminds me the most of my daughter is the Jonas Brothers, and it's the self-titled album, The Jonas Brothers. Um, we have such an amazing memory of... Um, listening to the Jonas Brothers, going to concerts, um, just uh, just incredible moments I'll never forget with my daughter. Uh, my daughter won a meet and greet contest and was able to meet them. Uh, it was a great memory and we've been to several Jonas Brothers concerts together and this September we are going to see them again. We are going to go to a concert in Indianapolis so I'm really looking forward to um, seeing them and just reliving some of the wonderful memories uh, that I have with my daughter uh, from seeing um, the Jonas Brothers. I guess the best memory for me of the Jonas Brothers is my daughter um, from that album, the self-titled album, the Jonas Brothers. Um, they had hits called SOS and when, um, when You Look Me in the Eyes and Hold On. She had a toothbrush that actually played the song Hold On in it. But she was able to play piano to when you look me in the eyes and sing it. And uh, as a mom for a little kid that age to be able to play the piano and sing that song, I just thought it was the greatest thing ever. So I have nothing but wonderful memories of the Jonas Brothers. 
Uh, I have a record for her and me. They have a new one coming out. It is on pre-order. And uh, anyway, the Jonas Brothers is very special. Um, just a special thing for me and my daughter. Uh, the next one I'm going to show is um, surprise. I have a bonus daughter. Um, when my daughter was 15 months old, we moved into a neighborhood and right across the street there was this nine-year-old who was very um, curious, uh, very uh, inquisitive uh, little girl and she just started coming over to our house a lot. Um, it was just kind of a gradual thing but it got to the point where in summers she came over from the minute she woke up. She ate lunch and dinner with us until the time it was time to go home. And, um, you know, she had a wonderful dad, but she did have um, some issues. Her mom struggled with her mental health. And um, so we were more than happy to have her around. We loved her dearly. Um, she was welcomed into our family. She went on uh, wonderful vacations with us to um, when we went to Hawaii, uh, when we went to Disney World when we went to um, several trips in Florida. We always took her with us. She was included in um, Christmas giving and at one point we even bought her a car. She truly is a member of our family and a piece of my heart. She is now married and uh, I don't get to see her as much as I would like, uh, but she does have a really close relationship with her in-laws and uh, I'm just so thankful for, for the memories I have with her. Uh, we did have a very special, uh, every Christmas, we had one day, and we still do it every year, um, uh, we do gingerbread cookies. And uh, so that's a whole day, it takes the whole day to do because we quadruple the recipe and we bake cookies. And um, anyway, that is something that we did with her while she was around. And uh, so anyway, while we did that, we always listened to Christmas music. So Mannheim Steamroller, that was some of the Christmas music we would listen to. We also listened to A Charlie Brown Christmas. Um, there's just so many, uh, Bruce Springsteen's um, uh, Rudolph, uh, what was it? Yes. Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Uh, there's just so many wonderful Christmas uh, songs that we would listen to together. And when I hear this, I always think of our gingerbread cookie making times and uh, just a really great, great memories with uh, our wonderful girl from across the street who uh, is still in my heart, is part of the family. So anyway, that is uh, answer to question number two. Uh, number three, the question Chris wants to know, what is our favorite beverage when we are listening to um, music? And for me, um, I have... Uh, a very favorite beverage of me for me is Diet Mountain Dew. I have a really big obsession with that drink. I really love it. Um, every once in a great while, I like to have a little um, Four Roses bourbon, uh, neat, and uh, but not very often. The rec uh, the beverage of choice for me is coffee. When I am listening to music, I love to drink coffee, and I am such a weirdo that I actually have a mug. This is my favorite mug. It is the right weight, height, feel, and of course it's uh, got the Beatles on it, so it is a very cool mug. This is my favorite mug to drink my coffee out of, and coffee is my very favorite drink of choice when I'm listening to music. Sometimes, even when it's uh, late at night, uh, I just get the mood to drink coffee when I'm listening to music, so that is my choice for beverage. Uh, the fourth, fourth question, he, they, he, wanted, he wanted us to name our favorite record of our favorite genre. And I have bored you all to death with my choices. Uh, obviously, I love Paul McCartney. Obviously, I love Van Halen. I love the zombies. I love the Beatles. And you all have heard that over and over again. So I wanted to just show a few records that don't get um, showed as much. And, but I truly, truly love. So I'm gonna show this one. This is Don McLean's American Pie. This is considered folk rock. Um, I love this album. I think it is so fantastic. American Pie is a really great song, but it's not even the best on this album. 
this my favorite is Vincent uh, I love till tomorrow and crossroads another side uh, it just goes on and on this is a fantastic album one of my favorites and I don't think I have ever shown it on my channel before so I thought just to kind of be fresh and, and just show something different uh, I wanted to show this one for the psych category I love the electric prunes I've shown this um, in one of my videos when I actually bought the album and that's it but for psych this is my favorite I absolutely love it I know they consider Revolver by the Beatles and the Zombies Odyssey and Oracle as psych but this is truly what I would call a psych record record and I absolutely love it uh, for what I would call new wave I love the cars uh, self-titled the cars I love every album they made every nearly every song they've ever done but to me the uh, self-titled the cars album has incredible music uh, good times roll my best friend's girl just what I needed um, I'm in touch with your world uh, you're all I've got tonight and moving in stereo is absolutely phenomenal so this is another one I wanted to show just to kind of show something a little different so you didn't fall asleep during my video my favorite jazz record because uh, Chris is a huge jazz fan that is his favorite I wanted to show my favorite jazz album. It is um, Saxophone Colossus by Sonny Rollins. Such an incredible record. Um, and I guess a very close second place would be In the Silent Way by Miles Davis. I think that one is fantastic too. Um, I don't have a lot to go with because I'm not, uh, I don't know tons of jazz yet. I am kind of warming up to it. But this is a an absolute killer one. Another one that comes to mind is Duke Ellington's Indigos. I really love that album too, but this is my favorite. Uh, Sonny Rollins' Saxophone Colossus. The next question that um, Chris asked, he wanted to hear a really great story about a record. And um, this is the best story I have. Uh, the Beatles Yesterday and Today. Uh, my daughter was moving, uh, she had gotten a job, she is a cardiac um, research, does cardiac research for a university. And we were moving um, her to where she lived, um, and we also went to a few record shops. Uh, this was about the third stop we made of the day. Um, we went to this little tiny shop where she lived, and uh, I went into and immediately started looking in the Beatles department. Came across this, and if you see this, it says, I kept it in this sleeve on purpose because I still get goosebumps when I see it. Butcher cover paste over $30. I saw this um, and pulled it up, immediately started shaking and getting really nervous. My husband was over in another part of the store and there were a lot of people in that store. And I was trying to get his attention without calling attention to myself. And so my eyes were like, I was looking at him getting real big eyes, trying to get his attention. Finally, he looked over at me and he was like, are you okay? <laughs> and I showed him this. He immediately saw it and he's like, he, he knew he could see right here clearly. If you look at this record, you can clearly see Ringo's V-neck and you can see his face in the light if you look carefully enough. So he looked at it. He goes, oh, well, you better hang on to that one. And I'm like, no crap, you know? <laughs> Um, so anyway, I hung on to it. I waited till everybody else had left the store because I was so afraid that when I got to the cash register and someone else saw this record, they would say, oh, that record's worth a ton of money, and they wouldn't sell it to me. So I waited till everybody else was gone, and I bought this record, and I left shaking in a total flop sweat, <laughs> and I was absolutely so excited to have this um, within a couple of weeks I went back into the store and I asked the record owner um, I said uh, is there any reason you sold that uh, Beatles butcher for $30 and he knew what record I was talking about and without missing a beat he looked at me he goes why should I have sold it for more and I said well it's worth a little more than $30 and he just as cool as he was, he just said, you know what, I bought that um, in a huge lot of Beatles records. I more than made my money out of it. 
if a customer of, customer of mine uh, got a great deal, I'm fine with it. And so I was so relieved because I was kind of feeling guilty for paying $30 for it. But anyway, um, when I have a dry spell and I'm not finding anything or um, I just kind of look at this and I think, you know what, you had a really good day on this one. So let's be thankful. So anyway, this is um, for me by far the story of the ages. This is the best story I have um, as far as finding records. The bonus question Chris wanted to know, uh, he wanted us to um, tell our best vinyl karma story. You can call it karma, blessings, what you give you get, um, whatever it is. I have a very recent story that I'm going to share. Um, there is a wonderful person in our vinyl community who got diagnosed with cancer. He had to have a very radical surgery to save his life. Um, the, one of the very last videos he has done, he talked about Record Store Day, showed his Record Store Day finds, and explained with regret that he was unable to get a Record Store Day record of Badfinger. Um, and it was a limited copied press, and uh, he really wished he would have been able to pick that one up. So anyway, the day of the Paul McCartney concert, June 1st, uh, my husband and I were in Lexington, Kentucky, and we ran into a store called CD Central. And I found that Bad Finger record that he's been wanting. And I grabbed it, bought it, um, and then we went on to the concert. Um, and then we went on to Florida. We went to the concert. The very next day, we were heading to Florida. And while I was in Florida, uh, I found the Bad Finger record that I had been looking for. It's called Straight Up. I've been looking for this one for a very long time because it was either too much money or the covers. I mean, look at this cover. It's in terrible condition. Uh, anyway, when we were in the record store to find this one, I almost didn't even look at the record, the vinyl, because usually when it looks like this, it always looks terrible. The vinyl is always scratched up and in bad shape. But anyway, I looked at this one. The vinyl looked really, really good. I bought it for $3 and I brought it home and sure enough the vinyl on here is awesome. It plays great. It is a great record. I cannot, um, uh, it is just a great record. Uh, I can't recommend it enough. Uh, but anyway, I showed this on a recent vinyl um, fine channel uh, video that I made and someone who doesn't make videos reached out to me and he said, you know what? I've been hanging on to a cover of this album for a really, really long time and uh, the record itself is warped and I'm not even able to play it. I would like to send you a better copy. He sent me pictures. It is gorgeous. So not only am I going to have a the beautiful vinyl that I found, I'm going to have a really great copy uh, of the album cover as well. Um, so that is incredible vinyl, com vinyl karma, but it does not stop there. As I told you, when I went to ba uh, buy Bad Finger for my friend, I went on to the Paul McCartney concert. I did a video and I talked about uh, what a wonderful time I had at my concert. And Norman Maslov, uh, that is his channel, Mazzy, an incredible guy who has an incredible channel uh, reached out to me and he said, you know what, I have something I want to send you. And sure enough, this is what else I got. This big box set of pure McCartney. Uh, I cannot tell you how incredible this box set is and how many times I've looked at it and not bought it. And I am so glad now to have it. He also sent me a bunch of really amazing 45s. Uh, so that, how's that for Vinyl Karma? Uh, I don't think it gets a lot better than that one. And anyway, that to me is a very special story. Uh, so Chris, um, I just want to say thank you so much for having your channel. I have really enjoyed every minute of it. I enjoy the stories about your daughter. I enjoy the stories about the, the jazz records that you collect. Um, You've given me a real education. You tell incredible stories and you are a huge talent. Um, thank you so much and uh, 
anyway this is the end of my video and everybody take care and have a really great day bye bye